Are you ready to deep dive into the core of retail data analytics and unwrap the secrets behind successful brand collaborations? That's right. Today we're peeling back the layers on how to thrive in the cutthroat world of retail. And trust me, you won't want to miss an iota of this wisdom pack session. This is where the magic happens. I'm Veronica Costello, and let me be brutally honest. You're about to thank your lucky stars. You stumbled upon this dose of insightful banter. Here on Talk Commerce, partnering with India for our monthly India Partner Corner, we're bringing in the big guns. Our hosts, Brent Peterson, who's in dire need of a joke writing workshop, and the savvy Madeleine Anderson, will be charting the waters of commerce with none other than the data dynamo, Erica Guider. And if you've heard Brent's free joke project, you'll know anything Erica brings to the table can only be a monumental improvement. So buckle up listeners, Erica's not just here to grace us with her presence once, but to ingrain her name and the game-changing prowess of 42 technologies in your memory bank. Get ready for insights and maybe a gratuitous jab at Brent's comedic efforts, all in good fun, of course. But before we roll out the red carpet for our data guru, Erica Guider, let's take a brief interlude to show some love to the folks who keep the lights on. A word from our sponsors. Are you lost in the content creation chaos, struggling under the burden of high costs and complications? Does the thought of regular content posting make you break out in hives? We feel your pain, but don't despair. Your content hero has arrived. Introducing Content Basis, delivering unparalleled content creation and scheduling solutions crafted specifically for your audience and needs. Harnessing the power of AI, we efficiently deliver on-point content every time. Our US-based team meticulously reviews each piece, ensuring authenticity and precision. We value your unique voice and insights. You direct the final shape while we handle ideation to execution. With auto-scheduling, your content always finds its audience. And with bi-weekly check-ins, our strategies sync with your vision. At Content Basis, we're your dedicated ally in the content battlefield. From ideation to posting, we've got your content journey covered. Visit contentbasis.io and say goodbye to content chaos today. That's contentbasis.io. My name is Brent Peterson and I'm your host. Please remember to subscribe wherever you download your podcasts. And now, talk commerce. Welcome to this episode of Talk Commerce, the Endear Partner Corner. Today we have Erica Geidner from 42. Guider. Sorry. Guider. Somebody's <laughs> got to okay. guide me through um, how to pronounce names. <laughs> this is episode like 220, and I think I've gotten 211 of those names wrong. So I apologize in advance. Um, Erica, why don't you do an introduction, a much better introduction than I just did, and uh, tell us your day-to-day -day role and one of your passions in life. Yeah, sure. So I'm Erica Geider. Um, I work at 42 Technologies, and um, we are a data analysis platform for retail brands. I am currently on the sales team and also manage some accounts. So I work with our lovely clients to make sure that all of their data is clean and in one place and then pushed out onto our visual dashboard. Um, my day to day, there's no such thing as a day to day. It's all different. So just going to jump right over that, as I'm sure Madeline knows. Um, and I have been in retail literally my whole life. So since I was seven years old, my parents owned a children's clothing boutique. So it's safe to say that I am very passionate about retail and um, these days passionate about giving people time back in their day by getting them all of their data clean and in one place. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Madeline, um, tell us uh, a 30 second elevator pitch on not pitch. Just tell us about Endear and why we're doing the partner corner for those new listeners. Yeah. New listeners. Um, I'm Madeline. I'm the partnerships manager at Endear. And once a month we will have this 
little partner corner um, with Talk Commerce, where we interview one of Endear's uh, partners. So 42 is an Endear partner. Um, we have a lot of um, really similar brands and existing brands that we both work with, and it's really great to collaborate with them. And as a refresher, if you don't know, Endear is a CRM and clienteling tool for omni-channel retail brands to help the sales associates do great customer outreach um, through Endear. All right, good. So um, before we get into content, we are going to talk about data and uh, data analytics, especially in children's uh, children's toy stores. Um, but before we start on that, I'm just going to tell you a joke, Erica. And all you have to do is say, should this joke be free or at some point, should we charge you for it? And that previous comment was not one of the jokes. That was just the corny humor that you're going to encounter in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so I, again, I apologize in advance for that. Uh, so I, again, I'm just going to tell you a joke. Just tell me if the joke should be free or if at some point we should charge for it. So here we go. What's the difference between a camera and a sock? A camera takes photos and a sock has five toes. That's, the, that's gotta, that it's a free the, joke. It's a free yeah, joke. That's the that is the high quality of my of the jokes. So that one was I'm gonna use it though. I'm gonna go. take it. I like it. <laughs> In the ever evolving retail landscape, one platform is changing the game ushering in a retail renaissance that puts relationships at the forefront. Welcome to Endear. Endear is a CRM built for omni-channel brands, empowering them with the consumer data to deliver a personalized, efficient customer experience that drives sales and retention. Imagine a tool that intuitively understands your customers' needs, giving your brand a remarkable edge. Don't believe us? Geronimo from Rebag says, I've used every CRM from Salesforce down and Endear is the best one I've found for us. With Endear, your team isn't just selling products and crafting stories that resonate, nurturing connections that last. It's not just a CRM. It's a tool that empowers your sales associates to make personalized connections, bridging brands and customers like never before. Ready to redefine retail clienteling with a platform trusted by hundreds of omni-channel brands around the globe? Request your Endear demo today and enter a future of enriched connections and unparalleled customer loyalty. Um, <laughs> all right. So, you know, I think uh, analytics is something that a lot of times businesses just leave it to the really enterprise level companies, but it's, it's, it's important for any size company, right? So tell us a little bit about uh, 42 technologies and, and some of those points in which you bring in analytics. Yeah. So we actually work with all size clients. I would say, um, I mean, we have clients from 5 million to the billion dollar range. So data and analytics is important for everybody. I think even if you are a smaller business, it's important to understand what your customers are buying, when they're buying it, how they're buying it. And that can make help you make informed decisions on what to buy next and how to plan the line. So I think there's really no, no company is too small to have proper data analytics. I think it's something that everybody should be embracing now. And yeah, I think it's just something that everybody should be, it should be at everybody's day to day. If you're in the, if you're selling something, you should know how much of it you're selling and all of the details around it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, for the for, um, can you tell us a little bit about the difference between buying an analytics tool versus just building one your own, maybe building it in house or putting together something scrappy? Yeah, absolutely. I would say um, most people do their data analysis now in Excel spreadsheets and they're pulling Excel spreadsheets from so many different sources. And we all know those files can get big, they can crash your computer those formulas can get messed up. That is the most common problem that I personally used to experience in my day to day at, when I was working in the fashion industry and in retail. So building something yourself is gonna take so much time and money. We actually did an analysis of this recently. Um, we're about to post a blog about it. It's just something that can cost up to $200,000. And sure, that's a one-time fee, but then you also need somebody who can analyze the data. So with something that's already done and easy to use, has a very user-friendly UI, you pay a subscription service and we manage all of the data warehousing, we manage all of the cleaning, all of the custom formulas. So every 
formula that you're putting into Excel, we do it on the back end. So you don't have to worry about, oh, no, is cell C749 now missing a number or changed format when somebody else emailed it to somebody I mean, the things we see are insane when people send us these reports and you can't even open them because they're so big because they contain every single SKU from every single day for the last year. So it's yeah. something that it is an investment up front, but, you know, it's something it's something that you should be investing in. Um, Eric, I think I think it's important think to think like, as both died. Oh, wait, try uh, talking uh, again, Erica. Yeah, you froze for a second, Matt. Okay, I was frozen. Great. Ignore. You, frozen. <laughs> um, you could have been frozen if you would have go out to do the musical. Oh my gosh. But you could anyways. be frozen because there isn't it like four degrees where you live? No, yeah. it's 50. Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah. It might be the same temperature here today. Oh, no. Just wow. kidding. Are you oh, in Miami 74. Beach? Oh. I'm in California, Los Angeles. All right, well, let's get back on track now that Madeline took <laughs> us off track. Sorry. Um, some of this we'll edit out. Yes. <laughs> um, what? So uh, I, I think one of the things that we, we see f from clients, especially maybe in the marketing space, is they have all this data that is potentially available, but they don't use it. Um, so the first step is to actually know that you need to use your data. And a lot of people do either use it or don't use it or don't use it in the right way. What have you seen for brands and how they pipe that data into your platform? How do they do that? And what, what do you see them using it for? Yeah, I mean, marketing is a great, very specific call out because with all of the drama surrounding the GA4 transition, I don't know if you've heard it on your end, Madeline, but it has been not good. I don't want to say anything negative about Google because they own everything that is on my computer right now. Uh, but the GA4 transition has been so difficult for so many people. The numbers are just not adding up. It hasn't been accurate. They're using, you know, the sales information isn't right. So we actually plug GA into 42 and then also marry it back to their e-commerce. So whether it's Shopify or Magento or Salesforce, we're able to match everything back and give them the right data so they don't have to worry about depending on something that isn't necessarily going to be accurate because it's pulling sampling because the data isn't very usable. So we make the data really usable by taking in the exact information, pulling in snapshots, and then being able to match it back to all of the information from their e-commerce sales. So I think people aren't even using GA4 right now because it's so clunky and the rollout of the new um, upgrade has been so bad all year. So it's this unutilized data that people aren't able to use unless they have it in the right place and somebody pulling it accurately. Um, so with that, you're mentioning, you're saying GA, you're talking about Magento, you're talking about all these other platforms. Um, why is it important to have a unified data spot? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that, like I said, usually people are pulling their data from so many places that there's so much room for things to get messed up. And also, if you think about it, every platform calculates things differently. I mean, Shopify calculates gross sales in a way that maybe Magento doesn't, or maybe you're on new store in your stores and they have a different definition of gross sales. So if you're just pulling your gross sales columns from all three platforms and then merging them together, you might not actually be getting gross sales. One may be doing it before discounts, one may be doing it after discounts. So having your data in one place, we're able to unify it. So getting everything unified gives you the most accurate revenue numbers because you wanna be able to analyze your business on the accurate numbers, not on this version of gross sales and that version of gross sales from different platforms. Um, as a quick sidebar about platforms, can you just do a quick overview? Like, do you, are you platform agnostic? Do you integrate with just some POSs? Can you talk about that? We are completely platform agnostic. We have partnerships with a lot of the major POS companies, Teamwork, New Store, um, Heart, Heartland. Um, okay. And then same with e-commerce. We, we work, we're a Shopify certified plus partner. And then we also do work with Magento, Salesforce. I mean, off the top of my head. Who else is there? <laughs> big, big commerce. And, oh, big! We do our good big commerce, and then for ERPs, NetSuite, Apparel Magic, RLM. Um, yeah, we're completely agnostic, but those are a few that we just see very commonly. 
That's great. That's so important to be able to say you can get all of this data. It's not just your e-com and POS. You can do all these others too. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times for other data providers too, they look specifically at a uh, at just one channel, maybe it's just a web channel, but they don't necessarily bring in POS to to see that whole holistic view on what you're trying to do. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about how you take different data points. You also you already mentioned how you kind of combine some of those two together, but taking different endpoints to make sure your data is centralized. But then I think you also sort of you you mentioned not, not scrubbing the data, but making that data readable by humans, right? Yeah, I mean, and we do, we do scrub it, we clean it, we, we make sure it's all going to be on the same page and speaking the same language so that your merchandising team, your marketing team, your finance team, everybody can go in and everybody's looking at the same numbers. So it's the true source of truth. You don't have to do anything manual on the, on your end to make sure that these numbers are all calculating correctly. Um, yeah, it's, it's something that I think is, is so under, underlooked at, you know, it's not something that people really think about. They just think this is the way we do things and that's how it's done. It's like, wait, but there's a better way to do it. And we can, you can save time doing it. You don't have to pull from all these places. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I like what you said about uh, Google analytics as well. Um, and I, I am a, you know, I, I transitioned, transitioned into GA4 and I have to say, what was Google thinking when they made it so different? And then all of our really cool little dashboards didn't work. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit about how you can make sure that your dashboard is always the same by using your platform. Yeah, so that's it's such a good point. It's They're using so much sampling. I mean, I think the one thing that is good is if you're looking at a very short time period in Google Analytics, you're going to get the exact information. But the minute you open it up to look at a week or a month or a, you know, like a longer period, they're using sampling. So it's just estimations. And one thing that's been fun to show our clients is that if you export the data from Google, and then you add up like all of the sessions or all of the like the visits, you add them up, they never equal the number that's at the top. So it doesn't even make sense in there. So what we do is through our API connection, we take daily snapshots because those single day data points are super accurate and they're they're very detailed. So we're taking in those daily snapshots, storing them, and then doing the calculations on our own. So we're not gonna match Google Analytics when our clients compare back to Google Analytics, but we're going to be more accurate and we have had so many sessions and done so we're going to write a blog on it we've done so many training materials because people you know constantly want to say well you don't match google analytics and then it's like right but google analytics isn't right i mean again i don't want to dog on google analytics but it's just been as you know not a fun transition for so many people so by taking those daily snapshots and doing the calculations ourselves we're giving them those more accurate numbers yeah, any of those articles or blogs that you guys have on your website, we would love to see them and we can post them in the um, in the landing page for this podcast. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you some links. Yeah. Um, so moving away from these platforms that you can pull from, can you talk about um, AI and how that might be playing a part in data, data, data analytics in the future or currently? Yeah, I mean, AI is such, it's such a buzzword to me. It's everywhere. It's in everything. It would be a miss to not at least talk about it a little, but we are starting to see tools that are, or like processes that'll let you predict when things are going to sell out based on your previous selling and then be able to alert you. We're actually working on a chat GPT for our platform. So you can just text it and say, what was my top item last week? Or what am I about to sell out of? So that it'll write back to you and say, hey, you're, you're running low on this, or this was your top item, your top store, whatever it is you want to see. So you can just get those quick in the moment answers. And that's going to be helpful for those people that are on retail teams. Maybe they're in a store and they want to know, like, what was the top item in Madison Avenue last week? They can just send a text and it'll write back and give you all of the information. I think that's, that's going to be so huge. Cool. That's so smart. I used to do that with my bank in high school. I would text Wells Fargo, what's my balance? in my debit card and it would text me back my balance. <laughs> it Negative was so $20. handy. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. It's that's, still empty. I mean, 
that that has to be such a game changer not yet not even just for sales associates but just to be able to see like last year you sold 700 white t-shirts this year make sure you buy more to sell that's great yeah um i i think that 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 part of that the analytic part of of ai is the one that's the most overlooked the generative ai is the one that gets the most uh, that gets most talked about right now, but having the ability to do that in the back end, then we should also preface that these are private chat GPTs. These are not part of the public sphere, I, I'm assuming, when we're yes. talking about this. So it's your own little mini LLM that's helping you to understand that data. Um, the other part of that, I think it's it's like, it's so easy now for a analysts to get the data they want and also to build the data they want by simply using natural text to do that. T talk a little bit about how you've seen ch this change even in the last year by using some of those tools to help uh, the analysts with AI. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's just a game changer in time savings. I mean, the amount of time you're saving by not having to say like, okay, let me step away and go look this up. You're able to just ask it a question. I mean, we've all seen that in chat GPT, helping us write emails or helping us people write cover letters. I'm sure it's helping students write papers. It's just <laughs> the time savings is, I know, I wish it was around when I was in college. Uh, the time saving, I think, is the biggest thing. I think it's going to be um, just something that people can utilize on the go. You know, everybody's so busy. A lot of retail companies are cutting, you know, cutting jobs. So there's less people to get the work done. We're all trying to maximize our time. How can we make things work smarter, not harder? You know, get things faster. Get to How do we get to the answer quicker? Um, Erica, my next question is going to be one that we've asked most partners, um, all of them, mm -hmm. I think. Do you have a brand that is your white whale that you're like, oh, I would just give anything to, to work with this brand? Um, do you have one? <clears throat> Me personally, we have so many brands that I love. We just signed two really cool brands last week. Um, I, I guess I can say their names. They signed. We just signed Fear of God, which is so huge in streetwear mm. right now. Yeah. And Splendid, which is a company that I worked for many years ago. So those are, it's so exciting to come back around and sign brands that I worked for, you know, while I was working in the fashion industry. But I don't, I mean, my white whale brand, I don't know. I, I Like I said, I love so many of the brands we work with that I, you know, brands that I wear and shop, those are the ones that I'm looking at. So I'm yeah. a big fan of Redone Jeans. I'm a big fan of Claire V, you know. Mm -hmm all these contemporary brands. That's really our sweet spot too, is like contemporary fashion. We work with a lot of contemporary fashion brands. Have you seen um, specific brands where you've really made an impact uh, by really unifying that data? Yeah, honestly, Figs is a client of ours, um, Fig Scrubs. They just opened a store, so they were super excited about getting that in, but they are so dependent on us at this point that they... I mean, they, they love us. They use our grid page for everything. And they used to have to pull their inventory from one place. And then they would also pull in their plans and their budget from another place. And then they sell, the, they drop scrubs and will sell out in an hour. It is insane. So we have hourly updates for them so they can go in and see on the hour, how much are we sold through? And they can make their reorders in that moment and say like, we are selling through this magenta top let's put in a reorder for it now so that obviously that stuff takes three months to get here, but they know, okay, this was a huge hit on the jump. We're going to get more of that and it's going to perform again. Isn't it crazy that there are those brands that are like, like a Lululemon, but a very specific niche, like it's scrubs. <laughs> It's as I was watching there, I was nerding out on Black Friday and I was watching a couple of our clients' dashboards and I was just blown away by the sales, their conversion rate. It was all just, I was like, wow. I mean, it makes sense because it's such like a niche market and that's who people go to. But it was, you know, it's just crazy to me how much people are buying. Actually, I'm curious, how, how did your, I know that our Black Friday for our customers was like record breaking. We posted some stuff on LinkedIn, but how was your guys' Black Friday? It was good across the board. I mean, like I said, I was, I was, I was spending my Friday and Saturday just checking it out for fun because I am a data nerd. 
And yeah, I would say pretty much all of our clients had great Black Fridays. I mean, there was nobody that really struggled. You know, it was it was really nice to see that. It's refreshing after these last two years of, you know, seeing everybody struggle. But I also think that people are in better inventory positions this year. We learned a lot from 2020. And then everybody sat on a lot of merchandise in 2021. And I think 2022 helped kind of right-sided things. And now people are getting it right, which is I'm already excited about next year's holiday sales because I think it's going to be even better. Yeah. Erica, if you had a good um, piece of like a nugget you could give to a merchant or a, a medium-sized store owner, what would that be going into quarter one of next year? I think getting your inventory levels right. I think keeping an eye on your sell-through and understanding that the sell-through is what's important, not the amount of units sold. You know, it's so important to understand the percentage of like your on hand that you're selling and not necessarily just like, well, we sold 500 of them. It's like, yeah, but you had 10,000. So, you know, obviously for a small business, that's not the case, but you, I think under looking at your sell through and looking at those data points rather than just looking at, wow, sales, great, awesome. You know, getting into the granularity. And then even we actually, something we do that's fun is take in an item master for the clients so we can take in any property, any attribute they want. So we have clients that sell boots and they look at shaft width and heel height and toe box. Like they look at the most granular levels. So they're then able to say like, okay, I know that my wide width performs really well in this market. I'm going to make sure I'm sending more of those items to that market just by looking at the sell through levels based on the different locations. Yeah. I mean, that's well, a really and- cool. Sorry. That's, that's, that's a, I love that. Um, that granularity of data. We had a client a long time ago that sold one type of shoe, but in so many different sizes that, you know, they could put it together. They could basically fit a shoe from or at almost every type of foot. I think that's, that's, I, I love it that clients are going to that level to figure out what is selling in what area. It's kind of like, you're not really going to sell a lot of Sorrells in Miami or in, uh, or in uh, Hawaii, but you'll sell a yeah. lot of flip flops, right? Right. And thinking about that way that you can kind of see like, well, we only sold this, we only sold 500 shoes last year, but we had 1000, like that kind of can get into sustainability. We had Recurate on a couple of weeks ago and um, kind of talking about that, like overbuying. If you have, if you have a, like, you're just, just it's going to lead to mass sales on your website. Like, Oh, look at all this too much stock. We have here's a 50% off sale. Like that's just becomes wasteful. Yeah. And like I said, right-siding the inventory and looking at your sell through, I think that's something that you can do it by those attributes. I mean, down to like color, you can say like, okay, well, we sell more of this color during this time of year. Let's make sure we're stocking at that time of year and not this time of year. So I think being able to look at things by those specific attributes is going to help people right-side their inventory going into 2024 when budgets are tight, you know, shipping takes a long time, got to get everything right from the beginning and not have to mark things down because I could go on for days about the implications of markdowns beyond just margin. I mean, Mm -hmm. just like the effects it has on your brand, the effects it has on your customer. It's, it's a whole nother thing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's a whole nother podcast. Right. (laughs) And especially if they're marking it down every week. So people just expect I'll wait another week and there'll be a sale. Um, Exactly. We've managed to burn through 25 minutes already. Um, so what? as we as we close out, I give the, our guests an, an opportunity to do a shameless plug about anything they'd like. What would you like to plug today? Well, of course, I'm going to plug 42 Technologies. Um, so yeah, we offer free trial for Shopify clients because we are a Shopify Certified Plus partner. So if anybody you know is on Shopify and looking to unify their data, we are here to help and they can reach out to me. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks so much for being here today. Um, Thank you so Madeline, much for having me. I'm not going to ask you if you have anything to say at the end, because you've already told me not to say anything. <laughs> I don't about have a that, shameless plug, but just go ahead and say something. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Um, I went to Costco today. Okay. Ooh, you said to say exciting. something and I did. <laughs> you said to. <laughs> and what did you see at Costco? That was interesting. Oh gosh, there was going to be a follow up. Uh, <laughs> Did nothing. you get any free samples? No. 
wow, okay, you're doing I, I Costco quick, wrong. I get a quick. So <laughs> one thing I like about Costco is they do have local foods in all their local in their locations, right? So you can get specific oh. foods. Like they have a little section that always has local stuff, which is really cool. But in, no in at least we go to Hawaii quite a bit. In Kona, they have a whole section on they with with just Hawaiian shirts, and <laughs> you can amazing. get. Yeah, and they're they're nineteen dollars. It's a great they're it's a great deal, and they're made in Hawaii. And there's another big brand I'm not going right, to say right now. It's a huge brand from the fifties. They're all made in China, but the ones in Costco are made in the U.S. So that's my that's my shameless plug. What a great Kona. idea for souvenirs. Who needs to go to the souvenir shop and spend a hundred dollars on a Hawaiian shirt when they can <laughs> just hit Costco. up local Kona Costco? Yep. And then you can you can also get a hot dog for a dollar fifty with a free soda. At the same time, <laughs> well, which everybody would know, because everybody <laughs> want to go to Costco for that. I mean yeah. in, in Hawaii. Um, Erica, uh, thank you so much for being here today and, and bearing with uh, my exceptional humor. Um, <laughs> it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for making it to the end of this episode of Talk Commerce. Please rate this episode wherever you download your podcasts. We are actively looking for people to participate in the free joke project. Go to talk-commerce.com and sign up for your free spot on the free joke project. If you are a business, I will do a 30-second elevator pitch in the spot to help promote your business. That's talk-commerce.com. Quality of